Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. This is the fruit from the Spirit. Yeah, I, most of us probably, or at least I hope, can rattle off that list. But have you ever thought about the fact that when you see those parts named in other passages, without having to repeat it every time, the New Testament writers are indicating that the Holy Spirit must be producing that? That's the fruit the Spirit produces in those people who are walking by the Spirit, following the Spirit's lead. They're characterized by that kind of fruit. You want to look at what people look like apart from the Spirit? You go back a few verses and you look at the works of the flesh. That's ugly. I don't know about you, but when I see the works of the flesh in my life, ugh, I hate it. But I love to see the fruit from the Spirit because I know that that's something that only God can produce in me, and specifically only God the Holy Spirit. I'm Pastor Tim Holscher, and we're looking at the ministry of the Spirit in the life of believers. And we're looking at the fact that by His indwelling, He can fill us. And we've been looking several, several days at this idea of filling, and we're looking at the fact that this filling is related to operating in the body of Christ. And just as an introduction here, talking about the fruit from the Spirit, when we come to these other passages and we see these parts of the fruit, maybe perhaps love, well, we have to know that the Holy Spirit should be involved in this. And boy, we could spend days going through 2 Corinthians 8 and chapter 9, because these two chapters are about the Corinthians, who apparently were a church that were wealthier or certainly more well off than a lot of the other churches, such as the church in Philippi, which is a Macedonian church. And Paul says about them, they weren't just poor. He says they were deeply poor, but they still begged to participate in a ministry, the ministry of helping some believers that fell on some exceptionally hard time due to a number of issues down in the land of Judea. And here in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, Paul is, is talking to these Corinthians about participating in this need, and they had apparently made a commitment or said they wanted to participate in this, but nothing has happened yet. And so Paul is now a year later saying, hey, let's, let's make good on this. And it says in verse 8, and this is 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 8, I'm not speaking this as a command. In other words, I'm not talking to you saying, hey, this is the way you guys ought to be doing. Make good on this. He says, no, what I'm actually saying is that the that proving, or that proving then, and we have this word dakamazo, through the earnestness or the diligence of others, the sincerity of your love. In other words, if their love was genuinely the love of the Holy Spirit, then it ought to be genuine love, and that genuine love should fulfill helping in this ministry. This is what Paul's getting. He's not trying to guilt them, so that's why he said back up here, it's not a command or it's not an order that I'm giving you. I'm simply saying, demonstrate the sincerity of your love. You have this opportunity, Corinthians, to help these others. Tell this to the people in our church regularly because I, it's one of the things I think that some of us don't appreciate because we look at ourselves and we say, well, I'm not a millionaire and I'm not a billionaire and boy, I can't drive whatever is considered a high-end expensive vehicle and on and on. We could fill in all the blanks with all the things that we think define a person as rich. But you know what? This is just the way I look at this. I always figure if you aren't worried about whether you're going to be able to eat not just tomorrow, but how about next week, next month? Are any of you worried whether or not you're going to be able to afford to eat in six months or next year? I'm not. And I realize all kinds of things could change to change that up. But generally, I don't worry about that. And I don't worry about whether I'm going to have a place to sleep tonight, whether I'm going to have a roof over my head next week or next month or next year. I don't worry about that. And you know why we don't worry about that? Because in reality, in this age, we're rich. Yeah. We go, I'm not rich. Yeah. Do you know what? If you aren't worried about whether you're going to be able to eat, whether you're going to have a roof over your head, I would generally say compared to many people in the world, we're rich. 
because there are still a lot of people in the world, they don't know where they're going to eat. And the reason I say all that is because, well, we, a lot of you that probably watch this, being people here in the United States of America, maybe there are some people abroad that are in different situations, but most of us, we actually really are compared to a lot of people rich. And we actually could demonstrate the sincerity of this love. We could function towards others and say, hey, there are people in the body of Christ that they don't have that. They don't know about that. I know of some people that were abroad in another country and the, the believers where they were had come on some very hard times and as a reason, and, and it wasn't through fault of their own. It had to do with a famine that was going on in the land and then prices and the way the government was controlling things. And you know what? There were people here in the States that said, you know what? We can send some money to those missionaries to help provide something so that those people who have a very meager income can afford to buy some food. Seems like a small thing for those believers that what it cost that group of believers collectively was very small with respect to us here in the United States. Potentially, men in need. And according to the missionary, yeah, it was used to help meet that need. And that's just an example. And I think that this is really good for us to stop and think about this importance about how we relate to others in the body of Christ. In verse 24, at the end of the chapter, he says, Therefore, display, put on display before the churches the proof or the display of your love and of our reason for boasting about you. Another know, Paul to go around boasting, he says, You know what? You, 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 Corinthians, you could actually show that love and that proof that of that love, the display of that love. And that love shouldn't be human gen humanly generated love. If it's humanly generated love, Paul would say, get, go get your attitude straightened out. Set your mind on who you are in Christ. Look at these others as all part of the one body of Christ. And when you're doing that, guess what you can do? You could have love as part of the fruit. And that love will move you to be looking out for the needs of others. We'll just close our consideration and it's been very brief these three days on some things in 2 Corinthians on the body. But in 2 Corinthians 13, as he's bringing this letter to close, he says, finally, brethren, rejoice. Again, that's part of the fruit from the Spirit. Be made complete or adjusted. That adjustment is done by the members of the body of Christ. That's the way Christ designed it, according to Ephesians chapter 4. Be comforted. And that comfort, according to Paul in Philippians chapter 2, is a comfort that comes from the Holy Spirit that he provides to us in these things. And be like-minded, or literally have the same thing reflectively think or frame your mind with. Again, the same expression that Paul uses this in Philippians 2, in verses 2 and 3, to have this same frame of mind. He tells you, Corinthians, you need to do that. Instead of looking at each other like this and Looking at each other, as we saw in the other day in Ephes or in 2 Corinthians 5, looking at each other in terms of the flesh. No, have the same frame of mind, like-minded, literally the same frame of mind, the same attitude here. And then be at peace, live at peace. It's a verb form to be at peace, but that peace has to come from the, from the Spirit because peace is part of the fruit from the Spirit. And he says, the God of love and peace then is with all of you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. That's the way they greeted each other. We do it with a handshake. All the saints greet you. And then he says, in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God. And notice this, the fellowship of the Spirit. Now, is this, each of, this, is, this is the love that God's working on. This is the way grace, is, grace is, being, is coming to us from the Lord Jesus Christ. But the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is twofold. It's the fact that we all are sharing in common in the Spirit because we all have the Spirit, but then it is this fellowship that we all share together. This is body truth. This is looking at it and saying, it's not just that I get to share in common with the Spirit. It's that we all get to share in common in this. We all get to have this kind of fellowship. 
And if you go back through this letter and you think about this, read through the whole letter, you're going to come across a number of body statement things and points about unity and the way we get along and other parts of the fruit from the Spirit that we haven't touched on. You can do that. Pick the book up and read it. It's going to take you maybe an hour to read through this whole book. It's, it's not particularly long. But you're going to come down and at the end you're going to say, you know, the Holy Spirit really has provided fellowship with him, with the Godhead, and with one another. We have that opportunity to display a proper love, to think properly about each other, to see each other the way God sees all of us together, to recognize that we're all in one body together, that we're all part of that new creation, to recognize that we should treat each other with grace, to remember, remember that it's not just all about me, but it's about comfort and exercising the comfort God's given me towards others. It's all of these things contributing to the believers functioning together the way God desires us to, and that is to his glory. And it is not just about you and I having a good day. It's about us being able to help other believers also have a good day in the Lord. Thank you for joining me today.